Morning guys, welcome back Cumbria and Homestead. It's the 20th of May, it's going to be a nice one. And I've uh, got my Neem Flit Spray out with the Neem Oil. I'll just show you this is the I did about 10 days ago. I've got new growth coming out, which is a good sign. Dead aphids. So I've got this plum tree to do this morning. I just showed I'm looking at it last night. See the aphids on there? So we'll give this a spray and then uh, it'll be down the plot to uh, spray the, the other big plum tree down there. And there's something else I want to show you in terms of pest damage. Okay guys, so we're down on the micro orchard, <clears throat> excuse me, what I was trying to show before, perhaps not successfully on the espalier apple at home, was where this aphid damage was, I'll just pick that off, I'm just trying to show that I think most of the aphids have been killed, and what's telling me that is that there's a new there's new growth coming here from the tip. There, there's where the original tip was, where the aphids were congregated. But that's new growth, which suggests to me that they're now dead, so the plant is recovering. And if you if you see, it seems like there's new growth coming. Even in these tips here, like that one there, that's new growth. So I think it is working. It's just difficult to try and that's dead aphid. So I think it is working and I'm not seeing any ants either coming up because they farm them so all indications are that this uh, neem oil spray has worked which is great. So anyhow, is that more dead aphids there? Yeah it looks like it. So, so far so good. So I've come to do this uh, plum tree I won't be able to get right up into the upper canopy, but I'll just do what I can. And same with this uh, multi-grafted apple tree here. So um, I've got all my gear with me here, so I'll crack on and get that done. Well, got those done as best I can. Obviously I can't get right up there, but hopefully that'll uh, give them some protection. Now, on this uh, pear tree, this is uh, variety... Um, Williams. If you look at the this pair here, as against that one there, you see the difference. This has become distorted, different shape. So if we remove that, let's go and have a look at it. Open it up. Okay, so I've got a few fruitlets off. As you can see, the the inside is black and hollowed out and in this example here I'm hoping this will you can see can you see them moving that's the larvae of the pear tree midge or the pear midge so what I have to do I'll come back and do it because I need to go I've got aphids on my sweet peppers <laughs> it's a real battle this year in the greenhouse so I'm going to go and spray them with soapy water but what I need to do later is come back over here on the micro orchard and um, just try and hand pick all the affected fruitlets off put them in a bag and burn them and I'm doing that to try and break up the life cycle because what these guys do is this fruit withers, goes black, drops off onto the floor and they burrow themselves into the ground about five mil or eight mil below the soil surface and pupate, uh, sorry, um, get into a little cocoon and then next uh, April they'll emerge again and the whole thing will start again. So the only thing you can really do is to try and interrupt the life cycle. So it is laborious but uh, it seems like the trees are pretty badly affected. So I like say I'm going to come back later and just pick them all that I can that are within reach and um, put them in a bag and burn them, okay? Yeah, so these are the King of the North Peppers and just looking at them last night 
Again, I don't know if you can make that out, but there's definitely aphids on there. You can see them there. And again, sort of more down in that junction there. See, see them there. So I've got some uh, soapy water spray here. So I'll do them all. And those are the uh, monster bell peppers yet to, to go in, but they've got them as well. Again, you see the leaves curling up, so I'll just spray everything with a soapy water. You can see there's plenty of aphids there. <laughs> and I mentioned this uh, in the last video, I think, but on the shoot tips of these black currants, you can see them there, so they're going to get a dose of soapy water as well. I've rinsed the bottles out and everything, ready for uh, next time, which actually probably will be in the next day or two. If we look at this apple tree, you can see that um, there's a very heavy fruit set. And uh, the next thing I probably want to be doing is um, <coughs> spraying some uh, Bacillus thuringiensis um, to ward off uh, codling moth larvae that might, or eggs that might hatch out, that's what they do, they lay their eggs on the tiny fruitlets and then the maggots bore in. So um, it's a question of timing really but certainly when you start to get in nights of 14 to 15 degrees C and above you'll definitely be uh, probably having problems with codling moth if they're in your area so that's another thing I need to do is spray BTK um, all over the fruit trees and just while I'm here uh, for those of you who've never grown chrysanthemums before and you maybe want to try it this is variety regalia it's a lovely sort of chocolatey brown chrysanthemum and you get a plant like that uh, you want to just pinch out that growing tip there like so um, and then what will happen is you'll get uh, some more growth coming out the side so that will anywhere between two and four and that will give you two to four stems uh, blooms if you will I'll show you an example of what I mean so there's an example it was pinched out see there's another shoot coming here one there and probably one here and one on the other side so I'll possibly get or there. So that's what you do. Alright, so we're back in the micro orchard and the fruit. You can see the gooseberries there, that's the result of strong winds we had recently. I'm just going to go and strain off the uh, comfrey tea, the new batch I've made over there. I'll show you that. Yeah, so this is over three weeks old now. Uh, smells like over 30 years old. <laughs> anyway, I've got my sieve and bucket, so I'm just going to strain it off into there, and then we'll give a, some to the rhubarb, and uh, I think I'll give the other bucket to the uh, new raspberry canes. Warning, this video is not made for children. <laughs> Plenty of uh, ladybirds around. Always good to see. Yeah, there's a lot actually. Anyway, I'm going to get on and now pick these affected pear fruitlets off. Probably quite uh, some time, but worth it, I think. So, another thing that's become evident as I'm doing this job on the pear tree a lot of fruits have already fallen onto the floor underneath the canopy of the tree and if you look they've got this telltale little dark circle and if you kind of get into it you can see there I think there's a, a grub there and it's just eaten that it will just drop off there'll be no fruit so the other thing I've got to do now is go around underneath the tree to the 
canopy extension and try and pick up every single fruit that I can in order to try and reduce the problem with this pest. So I probably spent a good hour or more um, with this pear bloody job. I'll show you what I've collected. So probably, I don't know, over a pound, but if you imagine these are um, they've only just set. So I would say probably 90% of the crop has gone. I'll, I think I'll be lucky to get a dozen pairs. But it's more important you just have to accept this year. That's the way it is. I've had a really bad infestation with this pear tree midge. And uh, the best I can do is try and reduce um, how the severity for next year by doing this now. So let's just have a quick recap. So the adult emerges from under the ground in sometime around April um, when the buds have burst, lays its eggs on the petals, stamens probably somewhere. The eggs hatch, the grubs bore inside the fruitlet and eat the way, eat it out basically, you know, kind of hollow it out. The fruitlet then dies, drops to the ground, the maggots emerge, burrow down into the ground, cocoon themselves where they lie dormant till the next spring and then the whole cycle starts again. So, like I said, so what I've done is I've gone round, I've picked off through the tree so another tip is that anything, the fruit should be really hard. So if you squeeze it, anything that's slightly even squidgy, that should be a telltale sign. There you go, it's just completely dead. So if they're not rock hard, remove the fruit and then go around the ground underneath the tree and pick every fr fruit that, that you can see on the ground, pick it up, bag it up and that lot is going to go in the incinerator. Yeah, one more point I should have made. Uh, that's about 12 foot up top there, so obviously I can't get to them. So all I have to do over the next week or two is just keep coming down and scanning the ground underneath the tree, underneath these trees, and just picking any of those fallen fruits up. Okay, so the last job I want to do while I'm here on the micro is just uh, get rid of these suckers on the base of these trees here. Some there. Some on there, look. Quite a lot on this one. And then there's a whole bunch, including weeds, on that one over there. So I'll get on with that now.